All right, so last week we had the trick shot challenge and this week we're announcing the winner. So out of all of our entries that we got, we narrowed it down to the top two. Y'all check them out. First try. Summer trick shot. Let's go. <laughs> What is up, students? Tonight, we have an amazing fuel plan for each and every one of you. We're gonna be diving into episode two of QTT, and this topic kinda hits a little home right now. We're talking about loneliness and just being isolated, and right now, church buildings still aren't full of people feeling a little, well, oh, hey, Ren. It's okay that you're lonely. I'm not that lonely, buddy. You're not? No. No. Oh. Okay. Oh, I really hurt his feelings. Well, while I go and console Ren real quick and cheer him up, uh, y'all check out this amazing story from Aubrey about how God has been dealing in her life during the quarantine. Hey guys, my name is Aubrey Zito, if you don't know me. And today I just really wanted to share with y'all my struggles and isolation. So I'm going to be real. March 13th comes around and they say that we have to be quarantined. I was the one person that was actually happy about that. Like I couldn't stop telling people like how excited I was because I was so stressed out about schoolwork, studying and different things like that, that I was really happy that I was gonna have a time for like self-reflection and to really get into the word with my quiet time, you know? And then I like, that's what I did for the first week. Like I just got into the word, I praised the Lord all the time. I was so joyful. But when those days turned into weeks and then eventually a month, I found myself really lonely in my isolation. See, I'm an only child and I live with my dad, but my dad owns a landscaping business. So during this time, like he can still work. So I felt really alone. And I started to become just upset about everything, angry. It felt like I was depressed and I didn't know why. I mean, looking back, I knew why. I put God on the back burner. But I didn't realize that until one day I was, of course, scrolling through TikTok and this guy posted about a Bible verse. And I was like, hmm, interesting. So I looked it up in my Bible and I was like, okay, yeah, that's a good verse. But whenever I closed my Bible, I felt God say, Aubrey, you need to read. And so I was like, oh, okay. So I read through 1 Timothy and I was like, Aubrey, what have you been doing all this time? Why are you running from the one thing that will make you joyful and happy? Why are you running away from God? And that's one thing God has really showed me through all of this. Is that, yeah, like, quarantine's not fun. It sucks for everyone in different ways. Everybody's quarantine is a little different. But that doesn't mean it's not hard. But during this time, we shouldn't be filling our life with idols such as TikTok, social media, movies, etc. We should be filling it with the Lord, with scripture, with worship, because that's the only way we'll be truly, truly satisfied in this quarantine and truly just joyful in general. And if you've strayed away from God like I did, don't be afraid to run to him because he's waiting on you to run to him with open, he has open arms, guys, just waiting for y'all because he loves us so much, more than we can ever understand. So if you get one thing from this video, I just want you to know that you're not alone. We're all dealing with this together. But during this time, we really need to cling to the Lord, cling to the one that's gonna give us joy. I really hope y'all enjoyed this video. I, I hope y'all have a great day and I can't wait to see y'all again. Bye. Aubrey, we appreciate you uh, sharing just how God's worked through your loneliness and how he's our comforter, our rock during those times. And we just appreciate you sharing your heart with us tonight. Uh, we're going to continue tonight. Uh, we love games. We love games. We love them. We love them. And so they don't know what's about to happen, actually. I, I do, because I'm leading the game. Executive it's, decisions. Yes, they didn't know. Uh, and so what's going to happen tonight is that I'm going to mention the animal, and they're going to take turns. I'm going to alternate this, and they're going to have to try and make their best animal noise to whatever animal I say. So if it's like an elephant, they got to try and make their best elephant noise. Um, and so Suzette, we'll, we'll, both, both y'all will do it. We'll see who does better, but we'll start with you. Are okay. you ready? Yes. First one, a cow. 
<clears throat> All right, here we go. All right, all right, Timothy. <laughs> <laughs> she kind of sounded like she was dying, dying cow, but this is what you got. Oh my god! Okay, we might just let y'all vote on this. Let's just keep going. This is fun. All right, a dog. That's a classic one. A dog. A dog. Let's start. Oh, oh! You want to stop? I was gonna say Timothy, but uh, sorry. All right, Timothy, uh, you go. What kind of dog? That's going. That's pretty good. Okay. Oh no, baby. Okay, keep going. All right, no, you do your Wait. bark. Okay. Go back to your bark. Out <laughs> here. <laughs> That's it? That's, that's a, dog. a dog that's not excited, okay. Yeah, a dog's not excited, I don't know. Okay, here we go. Uh, we'll start with you on this one. Chicken, a chicken. A chicken, a chicken, okay, okay. Oh, you're gonna get in there. You gotta get in there, you gotta get in there. Okay, all right, all right. I hear one every morning. Oh, she even walking, I don't know, that might make her win, let's see. <laughs> Oh my god. Timothy, where's the chicken tap? <laughs> wow. That's funny. That's this good. Is, uh, That's good. This That's is good. getting interesting. Okay. Uh, uh, you went, okay, so your turn uh, to okay. start. A monkey. Okay, okay. <laughs> He's taking which monkey right now? <laughs> okay. Let's don't do that. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's let's leave. Just, you, you just do a maybe maybe, maybe scratch your armpit or something. I, I like impressions. <laughs> we'll just let that be. I'll give yeah, that Timothy one to Timothy. Yeah. You know? All right, last one. All right. Okay, okay, okay. I, since he got the start, you on this one? A cat. A cat. A cat. A cat. Yes. Okay. Oh, oh, she's licking the hair. This is it. This is it. This is it. <laughs> Not gonna try a noise. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> You just, yeah, anybody can lick their hand. I'm saying a noise. What does the cat do? Yes, the little licking Yeah, but let's hear the noise. Let's hear the noise of the animal. Come on, Suzette. That, there is a noise that comes with that. Okay. okay. All right, how about this? <laughs> do do a spit up a hairball. Let's do a nope, hairball. not doing it. Okay, I'll you do out. the hairball okay, spit okay, up. <laughs> 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 can we get like a, an edited Oh, you did the whole thing. Hairball coming out. I think out of all those, I feel like I'd better <laughs> <laughs> uh, This is our life right now. Yeah. We're right, we just need students back. We're losing our minds. We're desperate. We're desperate for y'all to come back. We're in this job because we love other people. <laughs> that's that's right. why we do it. That's right. That's right. I think for me, like out of all those, I think I could do a little better cow than, than anything. All right. Uh, take it away. <laughs> well done. I've been around a few cows, I guess, job, in my life, job, you know. And so tonight, we just want to have a little fun. Maybe you guys can vote by, I don't know, just text them personally and saying, hey, you're your monkey was the best. Your monkey or was you're great. Embarrassed. Or your yes. cat was. Or Suzette, what were you thinking? That's yeah, what. maybe that. And so we, we're glad you're here tonight and we're going to continue tonight. We're gonna to head to worship. We're excited about what Seth and them have in store for us. So check it out. You did not speak, you made no sound 
and died for your accusers. And as your blood fell to the ground, you redefined my future. Cover. Yes, he did. For the King of Kings has claimed his throne. Both now and till forever. Like a drop was in there. I drank it all. <laughs> Did you lick that cup too? What Maybe. Are you, what are you doing? This is my coffee cup, okay? 
two, two, two. All we are, right. We are sponsored by Suzette's Coffee Cup tonight. You can just get your own for five ninety nine plus shipping and handling. <laughs> you would have been good Catch at Catch like, me after the episode. Have you ever done the where they try <laughs> nine, 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 two, what? No, no, no. At an auction. I will auction, say yes. I used to have QT. the commercial for Cinemark. <laughs> Like uh, back okay. in the day, like before they actually showed the movie, I had that all memorized. I still have it all memorized. Uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe the next episode. Maybe the next QTT. Hey guys. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> what is, Anyways, I back to tonight's <laughs> televised broadcast. <laughs> you just totally shot that dude down. He's got his hurt feelings. Over I don't even mind. know what he's talking. Suzette, this week's not about pride anymore, so... No, no, back no, back it up. And <laughs> Suzette hurts feelings. He's got Leah. She'll comfort him. I'm his, sorry, Timothy. His wife, yeah. You know? And so, yeah, you you guys know. Y'all know. I gotta bring it. Chuck Norris joke uh, of the So of the he day. brought Chuck Norris in episode two. Okay. Yeah, that's right. All right, so there is no backspace key on Chuck Norris's keyboard. Why? Because Chuck Norris never makes <laughs> mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I totally came up with it myself. Not at all. And so... <laughs> we're, we're sponsored by Chuck Norris Calendars. <laughs> <laughs> if, if we are, we're in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the boogeyman checked his closet every night for Chuck Norris. Did you know that? Go we signed up for one. Oh, yeah. sorry. Yeah. 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 I was going to jump ahead. Let's keep it to okay. one okay. joke sorry. from Chuck Norris. I, so what's it our... gets rolling a little bit. But, you know, we're glad you're here at Quarantine Table Talk. We're crazy, man. Round two, ladies and gentlemen. We are here. Round two. Not peacing out. Round two. And here we so are. We are going to be talking about a topic that we believe that has hit everyone mm. at some point in time during this quarantine. <laughs> it's called isolation or loneliness. Ooh. Yep. Um, and so it's, it, it, it's, it's the same, but it's isolation, loneliness is what we're going to be working through tonight for QTT. And so Timothy, let's, let's get this broken down. Let's get started again. We're going to, we're going to be real with y'all about this stuff. Things we struggle with, things yes. we know y'all are struggling with, what scripture says, like we're going to be digging, we're going to be going further. But so, but before we do that, we got to define isolation. Or yeah. Loneliness. So before we can jump into a topic at any time, we have to give the definition that we're coming from. So the internet uh, defines isolation as being far away from something and that something can be anything. Mm -hmm. uh, and then loneliness is defined as sadness because one has no friends or company. Which is happening right now because you can't be hanging out with your friend. Well, you can now, but 25% tall. Mm -hmm. Which is actually a lot, I guess, in a way. But especially during the strict part of quarantine, mm -hmm. it, was, it was tough. Yeah. But it's probably still going on in a lot of ways because we haven't been able to be free. Life's not back to normal. Yes. Right. And so, yeah, and sadness because one has no friends or company. Mm. Like, all mm. that was happening during strict quarantine. And so, uh, Suzanne, what, what else is, is this we do about this isolation, this loneliness? So, guys, you know, as we jump into this, I encourage you, you know, think back. I mean, what did your isolation look like? What does it look like now? What did your loneliness look like? I know it's not something you necessarily want to revisit, but I encourage you guys, you know, put yourself back in that situation. What was it like? Mm. What is the Lord trying to teach you about it through this quarantine table talk tonight? Um, so just from talking to my small group, talking to some students, you know, there's a lot of you guys that are truly struggling with isolation, yep. mm. struggling with loneliness and mm. feeling lonely. Um, and so just for example, you know, there's many students who school and church, you know, that was really the only two places that they saw friends. Mm -hmm. um, maybe yeah. they couldn't drive. And so it was really hard for them to be able to go visit a friend. And so now, you know, that's been taken away from them. And, yeah. you know, Zooming and FaceTiming isn't the same. Mm -hmm. um, and so they're choosing, you know, to remain isolated. They chose to, you know, remain lonely in that situation instead of, you know, calling a friend or whatever. You know, we'll get into more of that later. But even, you know, you have a couple students who maybe they have, you know, I know one student in particular, she has four siblings. Um, and her mom and her dad, they all live together. And, you know, her a big prayer request for her through quarantine was that, you know, she could get along with her family because, you know, the frustration and the, all the arguing, it pushed her into a place of loneliness mm -hmm. because she felt like, you know, if even if she reached out or she tried to engage with her family, it was nothing but, it was nothing but arguing and it was nothing but just not good times. 
Yeah. And so in return, that pushed her into that state of isolation. And, so. and you can be around people all day even without quarantine and still feel lonely and yeah. isolated. And uh, that's that's another sad truth to it. You know, and I think that's been happening too with yep. some that have good families. Even though their parents and their brother or sister are around, they still feel isolated and alone even in that. And yeah. so... What does scripture say about this? Like, what does scripture say about loneliness? And you look at scripture and there's actually a, a handful of people that struggled with times of being really lonely. Uh, and we first see uh, in Genesis 2, uh, God created man. Um, and he, think about this, Adam, the first man that was created, had everything. He yep. had a perfect relationship with God. He had perfect relationship with his creation. There was, there were, there were no murder hornets coming up out of nowhere on that dude during that time. Well, maybe, uh, but we, that, you know, everything. They weren't was, called murder. They were <laughs> called, but yeah, they weren't even murdered yet. You know, yeah. <laughs> ain't no murder hornet coming on right now. Adam was country, uh, you know. But so Adam had a perfect relationship with creation. I'm weird. It's okay. I'm so weird. It's awesome. But, so, Adam, right? <laughs> Adam, yeah. So Adam had perfect relationship with God, perfect relationship with creation. He had everything he needed. Mm -hmm. um, and something happened. We see in Scripture that he was alone in a sense of no other person like this, no physical person to hold on to and grab. And, and he was lonely. And wow. we see in Genesis 2.18, the Lord God said, It is not good for man to be alone. Y'all mm -hmm. hear that? <laughs> to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. And that's when God blessed us with the women. Yay! You women are awesome. Uh, y'all are so good. Thank y'all. We, we're dumb. <laughs> we're so dumb. <laughs> we need help hey, all the no, time. Yeah, give y'all more credit. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> that we, we were going to fall off something and break something. We need y'all to keep us in check. And so he made a suitable helper. Uh, and we know how God made marriage and became one. We talked about that a few weeks ago. We should go check our dating series if you haven't yet. Please. Um, and, and dot TV. Please. Please do. It's really good. Uh, but we see Adam had everything, right? But he was still lonely. Yep. And God knew that. And he That's said, this is not good uh, to be alone. And then Psalm 25, 16, we have David. And if you know anything about David, you can check out tons of scripture on him. Um, but David wrote, turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. So whatever was going on in this moment, we see David is struggling. Uh, and maybe that's you here. God, I am lonely. I am afflicted. But his response, you know, I love how he says, turn to me. God, turn to me. I'm alone. Mm. And that's really cool to see what he said there. It's a beautiful picture. Beautiful picture. Yeah. Then you got uh, Elijah, not Elisha. Come on, man. Why they got to do that? Like, why <laughs> they couldn't get a, a disciple student that was named like <laughs> Samuel or something? But you're going to make Elijah and Elisha. But this is Elijah. All right. And he said, I have had enough, Lord. Take my life, for I'm not better than my ancestors. So Oof. if you don't know what happened here, he had a big battle between him and the, the Baal prophets. God showed up, won, sent this huge fire, consumed the sacrifice. Jezebel, which was the wife to the king, was like, you killed my prophets, I'm killing you. And he ran really, really far. And he was just in the moment of defeat. And he said this statement, I've had enough, Lord. Like he's lonely in the desert. He's done. He said, I've had enough for take my life for I'm not better than my ancestors. Maybe this is you too. Maybe you're, or maybe this is you. You're, you're having enough of this loneliness. Mm -hmm. And so how do we combat this? You know, or, uh, or before we actually get there, you know, uh, we actually have some of our own testimonies to this before we answer that combatness to the uh, isolation, loneliness. And yeah. so what about you, man? Like what is uh, a personal testimony when it comes to this isolation that quarantine's put on you? Uh, man, quarantine's put on me. Yeah, that isolation. Is there being a point where, I know you're newlywed, yeah. so you hadn't really Timothy's been. Timothy's quarantine has looked a little different yeah. it's in the majority <laughs> of ours. You haven't been too alone, but is there uh, any point of just maybe even in the newlywed time that quarantine, y'all can't go out and do whatever y'all want as a newlywed yeah, couple? Yeah, it's, um, it's more like, that's been a big thing of it. Like, we're both very um, out, outdoorsy, or we, we have our places that we like to go, 
And right now, it can really feel like a house is a prison. Mm. And so I know we're towards the end of the quarantine process as it has it's been looking, but the first couple of months has been kind of hard. Mm -hmm. um, trying to get be okay with being caged almost. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, coming to grips with, you know, I would love to be able to go outside or I'd love to go to Target. I'd love to go to a movie theater, but I just can't. And mm -hmm. the environment, I'm an extrovert too. So I like to mm -hmm. be around people. Um, yeah. I'm not as big of an extrovert as Brent is, but <laughs> not so he, he's been he's been hurting bad. But um, but I, I like being around people. I like having community, and just it's been hard. Like I miss going mm. to church. Mm -hmm. I've missed it. I feel isolated. I know there's fellow believers out there, but I'm not able to see them yeah. each and every day. You just want to hug people, I, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, awkward hand hug. I don't know <laughs> <laughs> something. High five, pound it. Let's, I'll go with elbow. I'm not so, you know, totally, but I'll go with elbow if I have to. Yeah, and so I know for me, <laughs> as he was saying, um, it, it was kind of a hit for us. Yes, we don't, we're not in y'all's kind of school, uh, but for us, we were having a normal routine too of our coming in the office, going to you guys at your schools. Man, God was actually doing some really cool stuff. Yeah, we were having some really cool opportunities starting to pop up. Yeah, to the schools we've been serving and some new schools that we partnered with. And um, we were, I'll, I'll be honest with you guys, I, I was frustrated um, with it and it pushed me into a spot where I was not ready. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a huge extrovert, I'm sure y'all know. Uh, I love being around people. Newsflash. Uh, Newsflash. And, and I actually, my heart gets fed by pouring into people, by loving on people and getting after it. And, you know, it just kind of, you know, and y'all see, we've been trying to do text y'all. It's just not the same as yeah. me coming and picking, picking up wrestling one of those boys, you know, or, you know, just hand hugs or high fives or whatever, you know, like just all that. I love that stuff. And this extrovert over here has been struggling because I've been put at home with my crazy kids. <laughs> uh, I love my kids. Man. I know I say how crazy they are, but I do love them. But it, it's a 24 hours in a day trying to entertain a four, five year old now and soon to be three year old. And they're like, I'm bored. Or, like they want me to wrestle. I never wrestled this much in my life like you know but it's just that thing where he's a world champ now yeah, i'm a world i got my belt you know and so but it's just this thing where i love my wife i love my kids there's that point where i'm like but i love other people too you know yeah. and so it's just been tough man this isolation has been hard for me not to the point where i become so lonely where i i, I don't I want to die or any of that stuff, but I am frustrated with it. I'm like, okay, even though like the 25%, I'm like, can we just make it 100%, please? But that's just my heart of what's going on. But I've been praying through it, and we'll talk about that in a minute, how we combat it. But God's been working through me on this. And so, how about you, Suzette? What's been hard for you during this um, time? So kind of like what I mentioned to you guys last week. Um, so my, so I don't live at home. Um, I moved down here for school years ago. Um, so I live with one roommate and my one roommate has family in town. So she's gone a lot, hanging out with them, quarantining with them. And so the first two weeks of quarantine were me for, were the toughest, honestly, because as you, as you guys know, you know, I just love people. And as I mentioned last week, that was a lot of Suzette time. <laughs> And it honestly, you know, I struggled with, with feeling isolated. I truly struggled with feeling lonely. And, you know, it was in that moment where I kind of had, you know, you have an option. You know, am I going to give in to this loneliness or am I going to allow the Lord to help me through it? And, you know, it's really cool. Um, I taught the third dating lesson on singleness and it was through me preparing for that weeks ago yeah. that the Lord really put his finger and showed me that hey Suzette you're struggling with this mm. hey Suzette you're not content you know in quarantine you know because the Lord calls us to be content in all things in all mm. circumstances um and I wasn't I'm mm. honestly I was not and so mm. the Lord really used you know he's so intentional mm. he used me feeling led to prepare to teach that lesson to put his finger on that for me and ultimately deliver me from it. And, you know, after, you know, after again, I prayed and I repented and I really just admitted that, hey, Lord, I'm dealing with this. Here you go. And I haven't struggled with it since. And so that's that was really cool. You know, quarantine testimony for me personally, struggling with feeling lonely and feeling isolated. Um, yeah. 
And so you guys might be thinking, you know, hey, I want to be delivered from that. How can I combat loneliness? Um, and Scripture tells us tells us that. Mm-hmm. Um, in First Peter chapter five verse seven, it says, "Cast all your anxieties on Him, for He cares for you." Cast, like literally, you guys, like think about casting a fishing pole. Like you're just gonna throw it on Him. Like it's all yours, Lord. Take it. I don't want it. I'm gonna give it to you because He cares for you. Yeah. He cares for us. Yeah. He cares for you. Yeah. Um, and James 4, 8, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Mm-hmm. Guys, you know, there was, uh, I really had to reflect, and I, you know, I had to think, you know, how many times did I ask the Lord to meet me where I was and during those two weeks? Mm-hmm. Um, and so again, guys, draw near to the Lord, and he will draw near to you. Have you been, have you been choosing to give in to this loneliness and this isolation? Mm-hmm. Or have you been choosing to, you know, hey, God, meet me where I'm at. Teach me. Reveal to me what, you know, am I struggling with this? Am I, you know, what is the Lord trying to show you through this time? So. And that would be even the idol that we talked about last week, you know, just that loneliness. Yep. And so we we kind of been hashing out this like, okay, so we we know this has been happening amongst the our family, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ, and not just even lost people too, struggling with this loneliness and isolation and even with the the some freedoms being set back in place for us we still have moments there's still moments Mm -hmm. it could be back to 100 percent we still have moments of isolation and loneliness and so how do we combat these things scripture starts sharing those things there's so much more scripture by the way Mm -hmm. how to combat loneliness but uh, we're going to try to give some real life examples along with the scripture of how to combat how to combat it uh the loneliness and the isolation that's happening in your life and the first one that i mean we can't go any further than this one is your quiet time yeah um and some of you're going quiet time like i gotta sit in a timeout corner and just (laughs) and be quiet no that's not what unless you've been bad you need to go to timeout corner for a minute like my kids, but um, <laughs> you need to go to timeout corner. No, okay, we've good. had a timeout chair up here at the church. We for have whatever reason. I don't think anyone's actually used it besides yeah. us for like a, a video. video. Yeah, there it's was just weird. The case. we did have a timeout chair in the lobby of the worship center. We don't know where it came from, but um, quiet time. Quiet time is where you, in your day or night, at some point, stop. And just spend you and God time. Mm-hmm. Like I call it date time with God in a way. But it's just you yeah. and the Lord. Nothing. This is turned off. Do not just do not disturb. Hey, hey! <laughs> hey. <laughs> oh, oops, sorry, Rin. Sorry. <laughs> she had a good draft. Okay, let's she's, hope that they she's do not something. worthy to we touch the star. We are in Louisiana, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. I do not get. I must love America. <laughs> must love America. <laughs> Whatever. I don't even know where Moss was. That's that Anna, right? Anna Coco education right there. <laughs> oh, okay. This is all right. Let's go Half back. Half of you guys watching this don't even know We where need to go is, spend some so. quiet time so ourselves. Some, we need to ice. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Make it time for the Lord. We need to get. We need to go spend some time out with the Lord after this ourselves. But no, this is just you and God <laughs> alone where you take away all distractions. I guess the Dallas Cowboys need yes. to uh, take away all distractions. Uh, I even found out uh, one time a while back I had to stop holding pins because I would click it Ooh. and I'll fiddle with it and I had to literally stop putting things in my hands in my quiet time and so this is where you and the Lord spend time together and, and some of y'all might go where do I do what do I do how do I do it just pick a book of the Bible start with the first chapter and just just work a little bit on the chapter you only have to read the whole chapter in one sitting spend five to ten minutes in that chapter and just really chew on what you're reading and yeah. study meditate yeah take your time take notes journal uh there's a lot of resources out there corn uh, quarantine will push you to get in the internet you got commentaries you get i mean there's so much good stuff yeah. online but then there's a lot of false things online too you gotta be careful but um, we got a lot of those things we can share with you you can reach out to us with that but making time with the lord this is where you study scriptures this is where you memorize bible verses Wow, I know that. And if you go, I can't memorize a verse. If you can memorize a chorus of a song, you can memorize a verse. Which, if I start singing a song, y'all would be like, oh yeah. Like, purple red, purple red. And y'all would sing it with me, and then y'all would know it. You can't tell me you can't memorize some scripture. Uh, but also prayer is that constant uh, relationship with Christ. Not just mm-hmm. talking to him, but listening with your heart and your mind. And letting God speak to your heart. Suzette, what, what else can we do to combat loneliness in our life? 
So one thing, you know, guys, maybe creating a daily schedule for yourself. Maybe, you know, when you look at your day and it's this empty plate, you feel overwhelmed. So, you know, prioritize what you need to get done. You know, put spending time with the Lord at the top of that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, making a schedule, using your time wisely, checking your screen time. You know, be careful. Don't spend too much time on your phone. Don't spend too much time playing those video games. Create, you know, make a list of things you want to get done every day and stick to it. It'll help, it'll help your day have order. Mm -hmm. um, and also, you know, ladies, you know, taking a bath. A good bubble bath, dude. It, it does a lot. You know, it, it does good for a lady's soul. Okay, so I encourage you. If you haven't taken a bubble bath in quarantine, you go get that bubble. You go get those bubbles. You fill up that bathtub. Put you on a little face mask, you know, and just enjoy yourself. Okay, ladies? You, th you think we should put on a face mask? <laughs> Turn it, like, you know, <laughs> light next. a candle. Get it smelling good, okay? <laughs> Maybe that's our next QTT. We do a face mask. Oh, wow. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'm sure. I mean, I don't think Red likes bubble baths, but maybe Timothy does. I'm just know. not down with dead skin cells floating around me. Uh, you can't that's, shift your perspective. I and mean, I'm too big Red. for bathtubs. You know, you need to be. Isn't thinking a bathtub of, like a place of isolation, though, Suzette? <laughs> <laughs> it just feels good, you know. How? When was the last time you guys have taken a shower? I mean, come on, you people who are stuck at home every day. How greasy is that hair? Ew, yucky. Okay. <laughs> And please tell me there's been some deodorant somewhere in this yeah, quarantine. Yeah, yeah, please. If you do that, where's my deodorant? That's when I know you ain't be. Hashtag using where's it. the deodorant? We're not. <laughs> that's school. not trending. <laughs> Middle school boys act. Spray Timothy, what else? I mean, what else can it. we do? Yeah, so get out and reach out would be the, like the two that I would really hit home on. If you have the opportunity to get out of your house, do mm -hmm. it. Even if it's you taking a drive with some of your siblings or with your That's parents, good. just yeah. to like to have a community, but also to just get out and drive. Sounds like a good jam session. Too. Yeah, that That's too. Good. And then also just to reach out. There's guys, there's intentionality when you with someone when it's not just a text or a message over Snapchat. Yeah, you can see a picture of their face, but it's just not the same. Even a phone call or FaceTiming does more. You can hear the person's uh, voice. You can hear like the emotion behind it. If you ask them, hey, how are you doing? You can really gauge more of what's actually going on in their life. That's good. Yeah. And then uh, so definitely a lot more. And I, we want to just respect the time. And so we're going to hit these kind of real fast, these next few. Uh, so you guys, we can get to the main point of this whole yeah. thing. Um, and so um, you know, ability to drive uh, for your high schoolers or even middle schoolers, maybe you need your parents uh, to take you for a ride, you know, just to get out, uh, go get some Popeyes like we did today, or, you know, just take a drive, uh, you know, and Suzette, of course, did the bath and deodorant. Please put on deodorant. Please, please. Um, you know, Suzette, what about saying you're okay? What about that one? Like, it's okay to say that you're not mm -hmm. okay, guys. It's almost worse to put on the smile and to put on the happiness when on the inside, you know, you're sad and you're lonely and you just don't feel good. Mm -hmm. It's okay to say that, guys. Be honest with the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Be honest with yourself and find a friend, a good relationship, a good friend, you know, and just tell them how you're feeling. And if anything, it'll just make you, you know, when I admitted that I felt lonely, it was like this burden that was taken off my chest. Yeah, so, I mean, me are you afraid to admit that? Are you struggling with that, you know? Don't mm -hmm. let that weigh you down. Yeah, and sin does that. Sin puts, I mean, you see with Adam and Eve, they ran and hid in their sin. So don't let sin, get it out. The light shines on the darkness and reveals what's up, what's mm -hmm. your sin. Yeah. So let it happen. I know it hurts, I know it's hard. Um, and so, Timothy, what about us being in the hands and feet of Christ? Like, what does that look like? And when you're isolated and, all right, so this, I feel like this can go a couple of different ways. If you're the one that's isolated, you need to be the one seeking out the light of, to be the light of Jesus still and understanding that you need to help others that are being isolated. Yeah. Yep. But if you're okay and you're like with everything going on, you have to understand that other people aren't. So yeah. you need to be taking the time to check in on your friends, on your family members, on that's your community. Mm -hmm. When was the last time you texted someone from your small group at church? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's mm -hmm. just, that's mm -hmm. some realness right there. You've hurt each other's mm -hmm. hearts throughout the year, and now you're just letting the people that are alone and have felt alone forever just feed mm -hmm. into that and just their thought process. Yeah, that's good, that's good. 
And that kind of goes along with your family even. Like, how about your parents? <laughs> you know, students, I know that's crazy. Or parents, how about your kids? Like, yeah. you know, have you asked each other? Are you okay? Like, how can I pray for you? And maybe you're like, uh-uh, mom may be mad. I'm not talking to her. You know, I work through it together. Love, yeah. Learn to love each other the way Christ does. And so um, students, ask your parents for their story during this time. Ask for their testimony. Parents, if you have not shared your testimony with your children, this is a great time to do it. And yes. how maybe even a testimony how you were lonely as a teenager and how God brought you out of it. And uh, But we just have to be real with each other. We have to get ourselves around others that are healthy too. Yeah. If you get 20 people in a room and all 20 of them are lonely, depressed, and saddened people, guess what's going to happen? Mm. It's going to stay saddened and depressed and lonely. Like it, You got to get around other people that are maybe not dealing with this exact struggle as much as you. They're dealing with something else, but they can pull you out of it. Like if you came to me, we're gonna we're gonna hang out. We're gonna talk a lot. Like mm -hmm. I'm gonna get you out of that loneliness mm -hmm. moment. You know, like let's go, let's hang out. You know, get people in your life that are not just like you in your loneliness, but people that are seeking the Lord mm -hmm. and and finding peace in Him. And if you haven't found anybody, pray for God to bring someone to you. Um, and maybe for you parents that are lonely just as much as they are y'all kind of y'all work to seek christ together by studying scripture together praying together yeah. uh, get people other people in your life as a family for god to bring that hope of christ to you guys we we care about y'all we we don't want y'all to be alone mm -hmm. and, and you're not we don't have to be there we have a god that is with you right now yeah on the other side of that camera right now he is That's with right. you right. waiting for you to reach out and suzette what do we want everybody to leave with tonight? Like, what is that thing we want to say, like, this is the stake we're driving into the ground? If it's one thing that we're really taking out of quarantine, it's that we were created by God to be relational. We were created yeah. for relationship. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, the number one relationship needs to be with Him. But secondly, with other believers, mm -hmm. with other people who love the Lord. You know, going out and seeking out those who don't and befriending them and loving on them. We were created for relationship. Mm -hmm. And for healthy relationships, guys. There are relationships that aren't healthy. Mm. Okay? So we were created for healthy relationships, you guys. And, you know, we just encourage you to maybe reevaluate your relationships. Um, is and, it healthy? Is it not healthy? And we know some relationships you don't have a choice. You can't choose your mom. You can't choose your dad. You can't choose yeah. your brother. We understand those relationships. You can't. Mm -hmm. You can't unchoose it because you didn't pick it. You got to put into it. You got to put you there. But friendships and boyfriend, girlfriend, or like you have a choice in those things, yep. but the ones you don't have a choice in, how do you handle that? Like, how do you handle the hard dad or the mom that you don't get along with? Like, that are not helping you with your loneliness. Just pray for God to, to really help them, uh, to save, if they're lost, to save them from their death or sin. But they are saved. Pray for God to convict them, but also convict you. Maybe you're not doing everything right as a, you're, as a child that's yeah. obeying your parents, unless it's to do something against God. Don't 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 obey that. You know, but we want you to obey the things that God tells you to do. Um, and so maybe you're not helping your parents, you know, with with your attitude, you know, yeah. and that's causing even more just like separation between y'all and loneliness, even in the mm -hmm. family. Like there's been like what was Carl said the rest have gone up on domestic, domestic calls. Yeah. <laughs> Like domestic calls. People ain't getting along. <laughs> domestic calls have been on the rise over this past two months of quarantine because everybody's staying home and it's causing all this tension amongst those at home. And so there's there's all these things. And one thing we know is that God created us to be yep. together. Yep. And we said this last week, the same thing uh, of being together. And uh, there's been tons of research done of even babies that receive the love and attention and, and nurturing where babies that don't. And you see it, two different people that receive different things, one that was nurtured well and ones that weren't. And you see they the ones that weren't really struggle mm -hmm. with, with, not saying these don't struggle either, but they really struggle with their life and just knowing who they are and what they're here for. And me and my wife, we're very different. My wife grew up really in a hard home. I did not. And you can see the difference clash in our home. And so just know that you weren't created to be alone. You're created yep. to have life in Jesus. Yep. And we 
love sharing that with mm -hmm. you and we love sharing that with each other. We love just talking about the good news of Christ. Right. And, mm -hmm. and he came and died for our sins in our place, raised from the dead three days later, so we can have life. Like We don't deserve it, but he came so we can have life. So we wouldn't have to be sitting in our sin, behind behind the bush like Adam and Eve in our loneliness and our despair. We were created to have a constant loving relationship with our Father. And so tonight, maybe you're struggling with loneliness. Maybe you're, as Scripture was saying, like you, you, are, you are lonely and afflicted. You are hurting. And we want you to reach out to someone. First, reach out to Jesus. <laughs> he knows all things, and he can love you through it. But secondly, reach out to someone that is has a healthy relationship with Christ mm -hmm. and let them help you. We're here. Now, I'm not saying we got all the answers, but we'll help you through it. Uh, but we're here, and we want you to know that you are not alone. Even though quarantine has forced us to be alone in some ways, but you are not. God is with you everywhere. I love what Scripture says with David saying, Anywhere I go, I can't hide in the deepest, darkest part of the ocean. You'll find me. Or the biggest, yeah. highest point in space. You will find me. God knows where you are. He made you. He created you. He knitted you before you were even knit. Like, he knew you before you were in your mama's tummy. Like, he <laughs> knows how many hairs on your head. He knows you. And yes, so, right. we love you guys. And so, what we're going to do is we're going to pray for y'all. And, and, Timothy, I would love for you to do this. Let's just pray for these guys. And so, thank y'all for joining us tonight. We're going to yes. pray, and then we're done. And we're going to see y'all next week. We love you guys. So, Timothy, pray us out. Father, we thank you so much for uh, each and every person that will ever watch this video. Lord, you have a special purpose for each one of their lives, and that purpose mm -hmm. is not defined by isolation. Yep. Father, it's defined by a relationship with you yes. and relationship with others. So Lord, for those that are struggling and just being home all this time, or maybe even they just don't have many friends to begin with, Lord, I pray that they seek the true and the right relationship with you. Mm -hmm. That they look to you first. And no matter their circumstances, no matter the relationships outside of the one with you, Lord, that they just look to you for complete satisfaction. Lord, it is scary to be isolated. Mm -hmm. It's scary to be by yourself, Lord. And you, we know that the church was built for community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm that we were to be there together, to help each other, to bear one another's burdens, Lord. So I pray for not only people to seek relationship with you more intently, but also with one another, so that they can share with one another their struggles, they can pray for one another, they can build each other up, Lord, and they can hold each other accountable, Lord, so that at the end of all this quarantine, we're stronger. Mm -hmm and that the idol of isolation is crushed. Mm -hmm. Lord, we love you. We praise you. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Love you guys. See you all next week. All right, guys. We really hope you enjoyed episode two of Quarantine Table Talk. Remember, guys, whether you're suffering with loneliness, isolation, the Lord meets you where you're at. That's right. You yep. just have to be ready for him. Open your heart to him. Yep. And, guys, to piggyback off of our message from last week, Friday, we have some amazing news for you. Oh, I'm All ready. Right? I'm ready. What we Let's got? Get it. What we got? Next Wednesday night, we will be here in the main worship center, ready to see your beautiful face. All right? We so ready. Come, come join us. We're so excited. We can't wait to see you. And doors open at 545. Service starts at 6. Come hang out with us. Let's go. Let's get it. Woo! Logan and Hunter, y'all did an amazing job. Hunter like straight up yeeted a ball like 50 yards. And then Logan went above and beyond and he was, even gave us the edits of his misses. But who thinks to go on top of their roof and chunk a basketball off of it? So big credit there. And without further ado, the winner of our Texas Roadhouse gift card is, drum roll, Logan. Congrats, my guy. We're so we're excited that you participated, and we're super thankful that you did not get hurt coming off of your roof. So swing by, get your gift card.